Hi, I'm Morgan Fisher and I'm making vlog number one for our trip. Um, and during this video, I'm going to talk about my original perceptions versus my new perceptions that I've made just in the last few days. It's the 8th, we got here on the 5th, so we've had a few days to get into it, and we have so many days more, so I just thought I would talk about that for a while, and I want to talk about the museum that we went to, and how I can connect the museum to the loss of inventory and to the reading that we had about uh, images and imaging the Holocaust. And also, I want to talk about the orphanage. So, to start out, my original perceptions of Lithuania were very... Um, not knowledgeable. I knew nothing about Lithuania before arriving here and I knew some about the Soviet Union through my government class that I took last semester and I knew a lot of statistics about the Holocaust from high school but I never knew the connection between um, the Holocaust and the Soviet Union, Lithuania, Germany, Poland I knew of concentration camps near these places, but I did not know how deep Lithuania, Poland, places other than Germany had to deal with the Holocaust, and that really astonishes me. Um, we just spent some time in class talking about that, and I was really unaware of how deep the connections were. So I have already learned a lot from it, and I hope to keep learning about the connections so that some someday I can keep that up and become a more knowledgeable citizen. Um, the city of Lithuania is so beautiful. It has so much of its old architecture left and it's very interesting to see the old part of town that we're in and today on the bus ride we saw parts of the new town and how the modernism in that side and the old in this side how they seem to blend together still, even though they're so different from each other. I thought that was really cool to see. Um, the bus ride, we got to see a lot today, and that was very cool. Um, I appreciate the time that we've had to walk around the city, to just to really dive in and have the opportunity to explore on our own or with friends and really just get to know the area. Um, that. That's been an amazing part so far. We have a translator named Jolita, and she changed my perception on the people a little. I was really not sure on how the people here dealt with the past. If they did not like to talk about it, if they hurt to talk about it, or if they were okay and they wanted to talk about it. And I really appreciate the fact that Jolita has been so honest with us. She speaks the truth about the buildings and about the happenings of the past here, and she also speaks of the future. So I see them as optimistic at this point. They're sorrowful, sorrowful for what they have seen or heard in the past, but they're also knowledgeable that they can change the future, and if they keep pushing, it will become a memory and a changed past. So my perceptions are already changing, and I can't wait to see how they'll change more in the next few weeks that we're here. Um, yesterday we visited the KGB museum and though I had heard about the KGB and learned about it a little in high school, I didn't really understand how huge it was. And so seeing the prison and reading the numbers and seeing everything in the museum really made it all real. I had never realized the immense horror of the prisons. Um, I walked into the execution chamber really unaware of what I was walking into and there was a video that was playing and for the first time pretty much in my life I walked out of watching a video feeling completely sick to my stomach after what I watched. They showed the process of the executions and that's really it was kind of hard to deal with um, and you can tell it's hard to deal with for everyone but it's also an important thing to see and an important part to learn about because it was something that happened and it's something that probably still happens in many places today and we're unaware of. So to be made aware of that was substantially important to me. Um, I also noticed the thing that stuck out to me was all of the numbers. 
everything had a number. In the books, all of the people that were taken were numbered. And they were written down, and they were documented. And then in the reading we had, I also was amazed by the fact that the Nazis took pictures of the people while they were shooting them, or after they shot them, or before they shot them. And just the connection between the pictures and the connection to a camera with a gun. I had never made that connection. They're both called shooting. You shoot a gun and you shoot a good picture, but they're so different, and I had never made that connection. But for some reason, the connection between the photographs that they mention in our readings and the numbers, those people were numbers in their minds, and that really stuck out to me. Those people are numbers, not people. Now we photograph people, and we want to get a good picture of these people, but they just wanted a picture of the number that they were about to shoot, and that really stuck out to me. It really surprised me, and I was unaware of any of that. So that was a learning curve for me, and I'm, um, I'm grateful to be able to connect the two and learn about them at the same time because it, I, it makes me understand it better. So that's been nice. Um, with the lost inventory paper we've been writing, I really realized that though I feel as though my losses may have been big, um, compared to what I've seen other people be losing in the time of the Holocaust and the Soviet regime, I am amazed at the differences. They lost everything. They lost their family. They lost hope. They lost goodwill. They lost homes. They lost their lives. And it makes my losses look small, but I'm also grateful for my losses because it enables me to be able to connect with these people. And so I really hope to be able to gain something from our conversations that we'll have and really learn about how they coped with their losses compared to how I remember coping with mine. And if there are comparisons or if they're so different from each other that there are the, that comparisons are hard to find. So I'm really interested to see that. Um, one last thing is that today we visited the orphanage, and I don't know much about orphanages. I've watched the movie Annie, but that's pretty much been it. And so it was really great to actually have the experience to see this place. The kids were amazing. They're great kids. Um, they seemed to be doing very well. They seemed to be very excited to see us, but also okay when we left. They chased us with the bus, waving us down because they had such a great time with us. But you could tell that they felt safe and happy in that home, and that they had lots of other kids that they were with. That's not saying that it's easy for them, by any means. I don't know their story, but I would love to. And it inspired me to hope to find places that I can help kids in the United States. They might, it might not be the same circumstances, but I'm interested in looking into how the foster system or the orphanage system works in the United States because you don't hear very much about it. So that was amazing to see all those kids and make connections and have that experience with them today. And I'm sure we will have many more learning experiences like that in the next few days and weeks. And I'm excited and I will make more vlogs about it later.